is good. Let's just say that. <laughs> That's pretty much it, the end. Um, <laughs> and we're done. That sums it up. I am nothing and he is everything. Have you ever been squeezed by the Lord? <clears throat> yeah. Have you ever been refined by his fire? So, um, there's a refining process that he calls us to. And it's for a purpose. And it's not for punishment, but it's for his glory. Because if you have sat in this room, and if you're sitting here now, or you're joining us online, or you're seeing this wherever you're seeing this, and you have said yes to Jesus, then you have said yes to refinement. And you have said yes to trials but you've also said yes to an incredible, abounding, and overwhelming, life-changing love that you have dreamt of your whole life. And a joy unspeakable, full of his glory. And it's both things at once. It's both. It's not one or the other. It's both. He finds you in the middle of the heap when you're going through it, when, when the trials are there, when you feel like you're being squeezed, or you look in the mirror and you don't find worth and value, but he already died and said you were valuable, right? Because otherwise, why would he give himself on a cross? Why would the father give his only son? And so I find myself um, in this constant like barrage of revelation from the Lord and through some people and through the Bible and through just spending time with him and and uh and he's just so he's so kind and gracious he's more kind than I deserve and his grace abounds more than I could ever possibly imagine and see, uh, I heard, I heard uh, Francis Chan the other day, and he was talking about the Bible and the Word of God, right? So he talks about, he's talking about the Bible and the Word of God. And he said that uh, we should be opening this, expecting to have a Mount of Transfiguration moment where we encounter the father saying, this is my son, listen to him. And that should change us. And if it doesn't, then we're not reading it for any other purpose than to fulfill whatever it is we want. Because we should be in here hearing his words, knowing who he is, and having absolute huge transformation. Because the voice of God is speaking to you. And I was just like, I've been just like mulling this over. Because I have read the Bible my whole life. But I've read it to find an answer. Which isn't wrong. But he's the answer. I'm not going to find a band-aid to put on that will just kind of cover up the wound I need the one that wrote it to meet me to truly heal the deep parts of the wound because that's what he's promised to do so I've been like mulling these things over and I I it's not it is it is very uncommon for me to not have like a, a path forward when I'm speaking but as I have learned from a very wise man, that sometimes you have to stand up here and he has to fill your mouth. And if he doesn't, 
then that's on him. <laughs> and so I'm allowing him to fill my mouth tonight because, because I am poured out for him. Because I don't want it to come through any kind of a filter of hurt or woundedness or brokenness in me. I don't want it to ever display any kind of self-righteousness or I have it figured out or look at this. I want to be poured out for him and the only thing that matters is him and that he speaks to you today. That's it. So I, um, I started reading uh, in uh, First Peter, and we're just going to, sorry, Jared, we're not going to necessarily go in the order that I gave you, but I'll let you know where we're going before we get there. Um, First Peter 2, 21 to 25, that's where we're headed, and uh and so let's, let's read it. It says, For you have been called for this purpose, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example for you to follow in his steps. Who committed no sin, nor was any deceit found in his mouth. And while being reviled, he did not revile in return. So I had to look that up, because I was like, reviled. I mean, cool. But what? And so it means that things, insults were hurled at him, cruel remarks, untruths were hurled at him, and he did nothing in return. He did not shoot back. Um, and while suffering, he uttered no threats, but kept entrusting himself to him who judges righteously. And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds, you were healed. We'll just, we'll stop there. Let's just stop there. For we have been called for this purpose since Christ suffered. So he left a great example for us, didn't he? And he says, and one of our key valuable, incredible points here at the Father's house is uh, follow me and uh, follow Jesus and follow me as I follow Jesus. And so I want to make sure that when you're following me, as I'm following Jesus, that I stop and see where he's going, right? I, I want to make sure that I step in his footsteps, and I don't want to go outside of them. But see, I don't often do that. I just think, oh, well, he's somewhere going that way. So I'll just, I guess I'll head over there. And I just start walking along, right? But I want to make sure that I am walking in his footsteps, but if I'm walking in his footsteps and following him, and people are following me, that I want to make sure that when I am being tested, I'm still in his footsteps. And that it's not anything self-inflicted, which is also hard. Because sometimes we bring these things on ourselves. And some things are brought to us. But he's there, it says, to heal. Because he died on the cross, he's here to heal you of your brokenness. But I want to make sure that when I'm following Jesus, that I'm inside his footsteps. St. Francis of Assisi, he uh, was born um, to a nobleman. And he was like held in prison. He was imprisoned uh, in a basement for like a year after being captured in a war. And then he got out and he heard the Lord. The Lord spoke to him, and he um, ended up g giving all of his father's stuff away. And his dad then got obviously angry, um, so the, the, the historians tell. And so he kicked him out, and he renounced his father to follow Jesus. And he took a vow of poverty, and he, he 
gave everything to help the people in front of him, to love those. And then he took on 12 people behind him, and they had to follow him. They also had to do these things. They also had to take a vow of poverty. They also had to follow him as he followed Christ. And his biggest thing is this verse, that I might follow in his footsteps. And I want to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. And they're big prints. They're not hidden. When you're following him and you have eyes to see, they're, they're there. And he leads you. But will you also follow him when you're in the middle of the fire? Will you also follow him when you're in the middle of the trial? Will you also follow him when you're in the middle of the heartache? Will you follow him in the middle of death, in the middle of life? Will you follow him no matter what the cost, no matter what you have to give up? Will you still keep looking for those footprints? See, because the world sometimes can get really loud, and they're really trying uh, hard to make it so that that is very, what, what they have in the world seems very enticing. It's comfortable. It's nice sometimes. Don't have to, nobody gets to tell me what to do. What? Except for, that's not true. Because they are telling you what to do. And you do follow, no matter what. So even if you say, no, no man can tell me what to do. That's wrong, because men tell you what to do all the time. At some point in your life, somebody's going to tell you. Somebody has told you, they're going to tell you, and they're going to continue to tell you. You are working by that clock, which means that clock was set by a man, and that time was set by a man, and you have followed that clock your whole life. You have been controlled by somebody that set that clock however many years, the calendar, you name it. You are controlled and have been controlled and have been following that set by a man. So don't tell me that you can't follow anybody. That you can't be under somebody's direction, love, and acceptance. And that that might look what the world says is control. But what the, what the Lord says is love and kindness and righteousness and holiness. And that's the only way to enter the kingdom of heaven. That's it. That's the only way is through Jesus. And the only way to enter the kingdom of heaven is to lay our lives down. The only way to enter the kingdom of heaven is for when you die and he lives. And if we actually understood the concept of this, and we didn't just check off a church list of things to attend during the week, you didn't fulfill your duty, but you just did it because you came here because you're looking for the Lord. You're looking for where Jesus is. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is a perfect place to start. Jesus is here. And it's filled with people that are hungry to know who he is, that are, are willing to stand up and say, I will go through the fire and be refined and stand firm in knowing that that cross is worth it. That what he paid for me, I don't deserve. And so then I will face any trial and I will face any fire and I might be a heap on the floor. But he is with me. And he, he, he is my joy and my peace and my comfort. Are you going to follow him? Are you going to allow the Lord to control you? Because when you die and he lives, it's no longer you that lives, right? So that, therefore, you are no longer in control. He is in control. He has to control you, and that is love. So are you willing to continue to do this when you face medical issues, when you face medical issues within your family, when you face medical issues within your family and they live 4,000 miles away, and you can't help. Will you continue to do what the Lord says? Will you continue to allow him to refine you? Because he's in control, and that's love. Because I want to follow in his footsteps, and I don't want to, I, I don't want to miss where he's going. 
We all, uh, some of us that were in Steve's class today heard the famous, if you walk that way, you're going to get up, end up over there, right? Well, it's true. If you walk in the footsteps of Jesus, you're going to end up going where he's going. I want to walk in his footsteps. Empty all of my self-ambition, O oh Lord. Empty all of my self selfishness, all of my entitlement, all of my unforgiveness, all of my offense, all of my envy, all of my jealousy, all of my hate, all of my anger, all of my self-indulgence, all of my whatever it is that is pointing to something other than you, Lord, empty me of it. So that the only thing I can be filled with is the Holy Spirit. Holy. Because I'm still not there. And he dwells in me anyway. And I am in awe that he does that. But not every moment of the day and that's where I want to get to. I forget. I live my life. But he gave us... You know, in First Peter it says, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example for you to follow in his steps. He committed no sin. He didn't have to. But he did so that we had a way to go. So that we could find the narrow path. But you have to go back to the beginning of when you said, yes, Jesus because you felt a love like no other, because you found him and you fell in love with him. So therefore, you'll give up anything. I mean, if you've been in love, you will give up sleep. Sleep doesn't matter. Because you're in love. But don't let that wear off because you've been married for 30 years. <clears throat> when all of a sudden sleep really matters. <laughs> right? But continue to fall in love with him. Continue to find his footsteps. Continue to say, Jesus, here I am. Continue to expect to dive into his word and find transformation, to find him and the Father saying, this is my son, listen to him. I want to expect miracles to happen when I read the Bible, and then when I go out and I preach the gospel, and I encounter somebody and I love on them, that it doesn't come from me. It comes through me, but it doesn't come from me because I am filled with his love, his passion, his excitement for life. So there's, um, I was looking up the refining process of gold. So glad Dave's in the room. He uh, can tell me if I'm right or if I'm wrong. Uh, you know, we'll see if the internet's right. Um, but the refining process of gold is, um, it's, it's a refiner's fire and it basically it is to draw the dross or the impurities to the surface so that you can create pure gold, right? But here's the thing. Pure gold isn't always used in jewelry or things that we adorn ourselves with because it is soft and malleable and can scratch and mark easily. And I thought, hmm, as the refining process goes, I want to become soft and malleable. But that means that I might be easily scratched and marked? And do I still want to go that way? Do I still want that to happen? Do I still want to walk in his footsteps? And the answer is I do, because I love him, because I found a love that is more, 
exciting and incredible and overwhelming than anything I've ever experienced before. Because every day with him is absolutely an adventure in all the ways. It's like there are adventures that you have to turn into adventures and they look more like comedy error shows than adventures, but you're like, isn't this an adventure? This is an adventure. We're on an adventure. Road tripping with kids. We're on an adventure, right? It's like, here we are. And then some adventures are like, I can't believe the ride of my life, right? But we're going to have both. And are we going to be disappointed in him when we don't have just the ride of my life moments, but we're filled with trials and we're filled with refinement and when the heat gets turned up. Because you got to turn up the heat high on this gold stuff. It's between 1,000 and 1,200 degrees to be able to refine the gold. That's hot. So are you going to keep going closer to him or are you going to go further away from him because it's too hot? Because righteousness and holiness is too much. You're asking too much, Lord. And he's like, I, I gave everything so that I might have a chance at allowing you to be in communion with me, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one that created you and allowed you to actually have breath in your lungs and your brain to work and your heart to beat automatically. It's only, you, it's only because of him that you're even sitting here in this room breathing today. Right? So it's like, okay, Holy Spirit, like I want that. I want more of the Creator. I want more of the Father. I want more of you, Jesus. I want more of this Holy Spirit that refines and purifies and brings me closer to Him and lets me find the footsteps when I feel blind, when I feel overwhelmed, when I feel like I can't see the forest for the trees, when I feel like everything is right here and I can't see past it, when I feel overwhelmed and like I just can't breathe anymore and this is too much, Lord, and this grief is too deep, Jesus, and it's just, it's too much rejection, and it's too much anxiety, and it's too much depression, and it's too much anger, and it's too much hurt and pain. It's too much. But are you willing to allow him to draw you in and allow the Holy Spirit to show you where the next step is? Pour into this transforming word of, of Jesus the transforming words in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read them again. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And again, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And again, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So that you know his words and can stand firm. And then when you, when you dive into James and Peter, you're like, of course they said those hard things. Do you know Jesus? Because I know Jesus. Of course they're saying these things. Wake up. Because do you know Jesus? Romans 8, 18, what, last one. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to re be revealed to us. This is a blip. He's faithful. And he's not holding back and he's not he's not drawing away from you. He's he might be standing in place waiting for you if you've got some stubbornness going on. If you've got some hate towards him, if you have some arm out because of some deep hurt. He sees that. And the thing is he'll stand there. So are you willing to lower the hand? Are you willing to take one step closer to him? Are you willing to allow him to transform you? Are you willing to allow him to bring you through the refining process, even if it's hard and hurtful and painful and you're a heap on the floor? But then are you also willing to allow him to take you to the mountaintop and the incredible glory that he will show you? And are you willing to allow him to show you the, 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 the birds of the air and all of the stars in the sky that no astronomer has ever even come close to grasping are you willing to allow him to show you the revelations 
of his heart because he wants all those things with you. So I'm going to open up the altars. And if you've had your hand out to God, if you've allowed there to be distance and it's you that moved, not him, then I, I, I implore you to come to the altar. But if you just want to also come up here because you just want to be poured out for him, that you just want more of who he is, that you want to experience another wave of his love, another touch from the father of, of acceptance and worth and love, because he's here to do that too. And if you need to come up here and ask for forgiveness... for the things that you've decided, for the ways that you've abused his grace, for the ways that you've bought into your own selfishness, then he's here for that too. And as you come to the altar and you do business with the Lord, he will meet you with absolute transformation. You can leave here different without the anxiety and the depression and all that. And so we're going to have our ministry team come up and pray behind people that are up here. But if you just want more of Jesus, there's a lot of calls. This is this should be everybody in the room, right? Because you want more of him, because you're wanting to more of his love, because you want to be poured out for him, because there's just all these things that he wants to do tonight. He wants to meet you. So if you want to meet the Lord, come to the altar and he'll meet you wherever you're at. And if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I would love to pray for you because today could be the day that you can write down June 19th, 2024 can be your day that the world became different, that you found a love that was deeper than anything else that you ever could imagine. And you can say yes to him. And whatever that journey looks like, it's worth it. He's worth it because he loves you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Father, we love you. We love you, we love you, we love you. You are worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Here we are, oh God. perfection only you can make us perfect and we strive we intend to never sin again Jesus we intend to come after you we intend to love you with all of our heart we intend to love those in front of us just as you have loved us. Give us another revelation of your love. Give us another revelation of your love, another wave of your love. Let your joy overwhelm us. Let your joy overcome us. of our sorrow. Let us find joy. Thank you for watching the Father's House Oroville YouTube channel. But don't stop there. Please subscribe to our channel and help us spread the message of Jesus to all your friends and family by sharing our videos. You can also help support us financially by clicking the Give button. Thank you so much for watching. We hope to see you again soon.